what you do with your rear suspension on a special like this will probably be chiefly determined by the rear suspension that was in your donor car. I guess you've either got the option of using what's on your donor car or if you're not happy with what's there, getting something from the back of another car. Some guys just use straight tube axles or even box trailer axles. And although the handling of the rear of a motor car especially is not critical, I think they are limited in what they can deliver. But this is really good. The Corolla is good to work with, and I'm very happy with it. It is unusual in my experience in that it's the person struck on the rear. And what that means is that the shock absorber has two bolt holes that go into the hub and this locates and keeps in place the top of the hub. But I've realised that this unit is too big physically, it's ugly, and the back of this special now weighs two parts of bugger all compared with what the original or any road car would weigh in the rear. So the spring and the strut are going to be about eight times as stiff as what is needed so it wouldn't move at all so i've got to replace it with something else instead of these factory mcpherson struts i'm going to use a spring shock absorber units off a motorbike or a atv or terrain vehicle but the problem with them is that nearly all those vehicles are swing arm suspension and so the shock absorbers only have a single bolt hole top and bottom. You just aren't going to find a person strut on a motorbike. So the issue then becomes how am I going to mount it? I could put a plate here and mount the uh, ATV shock absorber off the top and then to locate the hub to stop it moving backwards and forwards and uh, in and out, I could put a heim joint there and make a, a, a wishbone going back to parallel the one, make a parallel parallelogram suspension and mount it over the top of the mounting points of the lower control arm. So that's too complicated, more trouble uh, than it's worth. I've, I've done it before, but it's it's too sophisticated for a little simple little buggy like this. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take this factory McPherson strut that is not suitable, and I'm going to remove the spring take the piston out and cut the tube through there and I'm hoping that the bottom of the uh, ATV shock absorber will go down inside that tube and I'll be able to put a bolt through that way and attach the ATV shock absorber to this which will retain the two bolt holes giving rigidity and turning the ATV strut into a person. So let's get this dismantled and see what we've got. My ATV shock absorbers have arrived for the rear of my motor car special. And before I bought them, I wasn't able to get uh, measurements of the diameter or the length here. The only measurement that I could get on the ad was the uh, eye to eye measurement and the spring rating. So let's see if these fit inside my cut down person struts. Fingers crossed. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Now <laughs> uh, yeah, that's taller than it needs to be. I deliberately didn't cut this down until I uh, got the, the shock absorber. And I can, I want to make these as low as I can. So I'm going to position it so that the uh, eye hole is right down the bottom. So I'm going to cut this person struck tube just above that flange and sit the strut straight in there in the lower half of it. I've cut the person struck right down 
as I can. Not much left of it now, but it gives me the mounting bracket. And my ATV shop just sits nicely in there. The fit on that point there is fairly close to the internal diameter of that person's strap. So all I need to do now is to drill a bolt right through the base of that person truck tubing so I'll put a bolt in to hold the uh, bottom of the ATV shock. I've drilled a hole right through at the base to line up with that lower mounting hole on the ATV strut. So that's now firmly held on the bottom. I've got a bit of just a little bit of wiggle up there, so I'm going to drill two holes in the top of the McPherson strut, or what's left of it, sleeve, and weld nuts on so that I can put pinch bolts, two pinch bolts in there to really lock that in. And the good thing is that that purchase point will be around that collar rather than on the um, anywhere near the hydraulic shaft. So. Be able to tighten those up and lock that in really well. Here's what's left of the bottom of the McPherson strut. There's the holes for the bolt for the bottom mount point of the ATV strut. And you can see I've added these two nuts and drilled holes through so the bolts can go up and pinch the collar of the ATV strut. So I put bolts on there, that'll really make that rigid. From this to this. I think I may have just built the automotive industry's smallest person strut. So far for the bends in the cockpit part of my space frame chassis, I've been using my hydraulic pipe bender. But I found that if I use the uh, bending die, the mandrel, that was designed for the 25mm pipe, it kinked it. I tried all the other larger dies and they all kinked it. And the only one that wouldn't kink the pipe was this one, which was designed for 2 inch pipe. But it bent the pipe quite okay. The problem was it gave me these large diameter uh, curves, which for the cockpit was okay. But now I'm moving to the back and the front of the chassis, I need tighter radius bends. The top notch manual pipe benders in Australia that give you enough leverage to be able to bend 25mm pipe just by hand cost $2,000 or more, which is four times the budget for this whole motor car special. So that was out of the question. Instead, I bought this cheapie online for $200 delivered. I've had to make four improvements to it, as I thought I would, to be able to make it work properly and to be able to bend the pipe. It's designed to be bolted to a bench, but the problem with that is there's always something in your shed that fouls the pipe when you're trying to bend it. So to give myself a maximum free space, I made up a bracket which allows me to just mount it onto the tray of my uh, race car tow truck. That gives me a huge amount of free space where I can bend it. So that was my first improvement. The second improvement I needed to make was to this 25mm mandrel bending die. My pipe didn't quite sit right down in it, so I had to sand it half a mil off either side to get that to happen. So now the pipe sits right down in the curve properly. And I also had to uh, file that out just a tiny little bit once again get another mill clearance so the pipe would sit in there I guess it's just minor differences in manufacturing between the pipe and this die I knew when I bought this that I wouldn't be able to get enough leverage um, to be able to bend the pipe 
because I'm bending the maximum size pipe that this tool is designed for. It comes with a handle, but I knew that was never going to be long enough. So the third thing I did to improve this was to make a handle three times the length of the original, giving me a much greater leverage to be able to bend the pipe manually. The fourth thing I did to make this bender work was to attach my long extension arm to the really powerful winch on my truck. I tried bending it by hand and I still couldn't move it. But this will give me all the muscle power I need. With an Australian motor car and a special, your main hoop has to have diagonal bracing going back. And you've got two options. One is you can have a single brace, which has to go from the centre of the main hoop to the back. Or you can have two rear diagonal braces. Uh, and if you have two, they have to be within 300 mil, which is there, 300 mil of the top of the hoop. I'm going to go to about 150 to 200. I'm going with the two rear diagonal braces because it better suits the framing that I'm going to do below this horizontal bar that will go down and hold the rear suspension central mounting point. <laughs> 